The first guitar we're going to restring is the nylon string guitar, or the classical guitar. And uh, when you change the strings on, on the nylon string and on the steel string, it's a good idea to change them one at a time. Now that may sound a little strange, but what I mean is don't take off the entire old set and then put an entire new set back on. When you take off all the old strings, it loosens all the tension on the neck, and when you put a new set on, it puts all the tension back on the neck. Occasionally it doesn't hurt, especially if you're cleaning the fingerboard, but I, I wouldn't make that a standard practice to do that all of the time. So take the strings off uh, one at a time. Now you've gone down and you bought the strings and you've got the, the right strings. When you take the strings out of the package, very often you'll see a little tag on the string or something that will tell you that that's the E first string or let you know which string is first so you'll know which one that you're replacing. You just take these strings, you can take that tag off, uh, loosen the wrap up on the string, just uh, take it, they come kind of curled up to put in the packaging. So you undo that, take the string, loosen it up like this, and there's your, there's your first string, okay? Now one of the things that I do when I put the strings on, on the nylon string, on strings one, two, and three, I, I burn the end of it. I put a little bubble on the end of the string. Now this might seem a little bit strange and this might make you a little bit nervous. But what I do is I take a match and hold a match up to the end of the string like this and just let a bubble form on the end of the string. Just a small bubble. Now when I put that bubble on the end of the string, that makes it so now when I tie it down on the bridge and I tie that knot, that string won't slip through. Uh, very often you'll see people put on the nylon strings and the string will slip through and it'll put a little dent in the top of the guitar, or crack the top of the guitar right back here. Putting that little bubble on the end prevents that. Now this is not a necessary thing. A lot of people put their strings on without putting that on. It's just a little precaution that I use to keep the string from sliding through. When you're changing your strings, it's a good idea to make the investment of buying a string winder. Uh, this prevents it so you don't have to sit there and turn the string forever with your fingers. So you can take the string winder, you can put it over the top of the gear like this, uh, and then loosen the string up. You can be picking the string while you're doing this to make sure you're going the right way. Make sure that it's getting lower. Loosen the string up, take it way down to where it's extremely loose. Okay, and then you're going to uh, unattach the string down here at this end on the roller bar. Now this uh, string winder I really like. This is made by Planet Waves and this is a good one because it has the string winder in it and then it also has a little place on the end here that has a, a cutout area on the handle and that's for the steel string guitar to take the bridge pins out. And that's a handy little device to have there so you can use that to take those out. Also it has on the, the one end here uh, some wire cutters. So you can cut the end of the string off after you've attached the string. So it's kind of a, an all-in-one sort of a string winder there. Nice, nice little tool to have. So I've loosened the string up. Now I come down on this end of the string and I might want to make sure that I've got it really loose down there. I come down on this end of the string and I loosen it up. Now if I want to save the string, um, I, w I wouldn't cut it right now. I just keep loosening it until the string comes all the way out. Uh, for example, so I take this string winder down and I could make it even more loose so that I can unattach it down at this end. And then I can pull the string through and take it off. Or if you're not worried about saving the string, when you've got it really loose like that, you can just go ahead and cut it. Now that might not be such a good idea if you want to save your old strings. And saving the old strings is not such a bad idea sometimes because on the nylon string, if you break a string and you haven't got an extra one, you can uh, take the old string out and, and retie it again. Uh, okay, so I've cut this off of here. Now I loosen this string up down on the head post and I take it off of the head post. Now I might have to take it around a couple of times take it through like so, take it off. Now I come down to this end that was tied, I loosen the string up, I take the string off over there like so. Now I've removed the first string. Now I take my new first string right here and the bubble end, of course I can't push that through uh, the bridge saddle, so I want to take this part of the string, point apart without the bubble on it, and I want to bring it through the hole like this. After you've taken the string through this part, part of the bridge right here, take the short end here, wrap it around 
the string this way underneath there. Then take it uh, two or three times around the string like this. Hold it over the edge there and then pull the string snug. Now it's important that the string right here where it goes under, uh, underneath the, the part that goes through the bridge, that that part is over the edge of the wood like that. So that that holds tightly. Okay. So I've got it wrapped around there uh, a couple of times and then stuck through. Okay. Now you've got that snug. Now you're ready to pull the string down, extend the string down, and attach, attach it on the roller bar. Pull it tightly, take it down to attach it on the roller bar. You bring the string through the hole in the roller bar like this, and then bring it up through like this. Now that you have the string through the roller bar, you're going to want to have about four inches or maybe just a little bit more, four or five inches of slack on the string like this because you want to have maybe oh, three or four wraps around the roller bar down there. So pull the string through the roller bar and give about that much slack. Now you bring the string over like you're tying a half of a bow or a half of a knot. Bring it around like so underneath, then cinch it up tightly like this. And after you have the tie like this, turn the roller bar so that the hole is going up and down. Okay, you bring that around like so, and then pull on this part of the, the string so it cinches up that knot and makes it tight. Now that you have the string attached on both ends, you bring the string up, take your string winder, see I'm still keeping some of the pressure on the string, take your string winder and start turning the string so that the string rotates over top of the roller bar. And you continue wrapping, taking up the slack. Now you notice that as the string was wrapping, I was trying to wrap the string so that it was going from the hole towards the outside of the string. When I wrap the strings on the nylon string guitar, I try to make it so that strings six and one are wrapping from the hole to the outside, then strings four, uh, three and four, three here, four here, are wrapping from the hole towards the center. And then strings two and five are pretty well staying in the center of the roller bar. This helps keep the strings straight as they run down the neck rather than crossing one another. Now I just wrap, take up the slack, then as I go I can be picking the string and hearing the pitch going up. I can use my string winder again, put that on. I can get the string up to pitch, then I can take my wire cutters and I can cut off this excess string about right here. Just snip that off. Leave enough so that it doesn't slip back through the hole. Now that I've got my string attached, I've got it tuned up fairly close to pitch. It's important to know that the nylon strings are going to stretch a lot, the treble strings and the bass strings. And they'll stretch for quite a while. Now one of the ways you can help el eliminate some of this continual stretch is to take the string, this is one thing I like to do, push it up here and then just pull the string along. Keep pushing down as you go and pull the string up like this. Another thing is to bend the string sideways. You can pull it sideways like this. Give it a pull sideways, push it, down and pull the string up as you go along like this and that will help take some of the stretch out of the string because we were in tune we were up to pitch and now it's it stretched quite a bit so I pull it sideways I push it pull it up like this and do that several times that'll help take some of the stretch out and keep checking the pitch as you go so you can check Now you see I'm bringing it up to pitch, I'm two octaves above my sixth string. Now listen to that pitch. Now when I stretch it, I'll take some more stretch out. See if you can remember what the sound was like. Now this is what, see it's gone down quite a bit. So I do that several times to get the pitch up. Now another thing that you can do, a little trick that I found helpful, is if you put the strings on, uh, take and put the strings on, say if you put them on at night, put them on at night and then change that, uh, put it uh, back in the case with the string tuned sharp 
tune it sharp just a little bit and let it sit in the case overnight. The next morning it's going to be flat. <laughs> It'll be lower than the pitch it needs to be. You can tune it back up again. But for the first little while when you put it back after you've been playing, when you put it back in the case, tune it just a little bit sharp and then the string will stretch and it'll go back into pitch. So that's how you replace the first string. Now let's put on one of the uh, bass strings down here so you can see how to put on the bass strings because it's a little bit different tie down at the end. Now I have here a sixth string. Now there again is the tag. Now sometimes on the fifth and the sixth string, when, depending on the brand of string, but strums, some strings will leave one of the ends of the strings wrapped with this loose wrap. And depending on the guitar, this loose wrap can be used to tie down here on the bridge because it's easier to tie when there's that loose wrap in the string instead of a tight wrap like there is on the, on the other end. Now you don't want, though, this loose wrap in the string to come towards the sound hole from the bridge saddle. You want it to be on the, the uh, body side over here of the bridge saddle. So let's take off the, the sixth string now and we'll put on the sixth a new six string. Now I take the six string like I did with the first string, loosen it up with my string winder, loosen that string way up like this. And you can do this sitting down too, you can do it on your lap. lap. If you don't have a, uh, have a headstock holder like this, this little prop is made by Planet Waves and it's a handy little tool if you're changing your string or working on your guitar very much. But you can just do this on your lap also. So you loosen the string way up all right, I've got a lot of slack in it down there now. And now I want to undo the tie. And remember I told you on the, one of the other strings that you could go ahead and cut the string. I'm not going to cut it on this one to show you. Now I'm just going to loosen the string up, pull it out. So I've unattached it from the roller bar. Now I come down here, unattach it from there, take the wrap out of that part of the string. And I've got my six string off. Now I take my new six string. I take that flimsy end down. And now I'm going to attach that down here on the bridge. Now when I attach the sixth string, it's a little bit different tie down here on the bridge. I take the string, the flimsy end, I push it through. There's that flimsy wrap I was talking about. Bring it around under the string like I did on the, on the first string over there. I take it underneath the string like so. But now on the sixth and the fifth and the fourth string, I don't have to do all of that extra wrapping that I was doing. So I just take it underneath one time like so. And then I take up the slack in the string, push that in just a little bit. And sometimes I'll leave it a little bit longer because some guys prefer to put it underneath two or three strings. I'm just putting under the one like that. And just a single wrap underneath like that. But again, I make sure that it's over the edge here edge of the wood, it goes under the string there, under the edge so that it doesn't slip through. Now there's a loose wrap, but it's staying on this side of the bridge saddle. The loose wrap's not over here. But that loose wrap did make it a little bit more convenient to tie the string. Now that I've got it attached on the bridge, I bring the string down to the roller bar, and I give myself about the same clearance, about five inches of clearance here, because I want about two or three wraps around the roller bar. I bring the string down through the roller bar, make sure that I have about that same amount of slack. And then the attachment down on the roller bar is the same as what I did over on the uh, treble string, on the E first string. Now there's my clearance, there's my slack, I'm through the roller bar. I take the string up through, tie that partial knot that I, that I did, that sort of half of a knot, and then wrap the string around and cut off the excess string. Take the stretch out of this string the same way that I did on the treble string. Repeat that same uh, action, those same sequences there with each one of the strings and I've got a new set of strings on the nylon string.